Dad's Crossbones is a post-medieval burial ground in the heart of Southwark. So this part of London, Banksides, um, and part of Southwark where Crossbones graveyard is, was a notoriously lawless part of London. It was outside of the jurisdiction of the City of London. There was a lot of gambling here, a lot of brothels, and a lot of poor people lived here. And this graveyard, Crossbones Graveyard, was a place where people were buried if they couldn't afford a funeral. It's known as a pauper's graveyard, and it has a very strong identity in this part of Southwark as a place where outcasts were buried. People that were too poor to afford their own funeral, criminals, there was lots of people that committed suicide that may have been buried here, but particularly children were buried here. There was even a school here. This is not a place where people would have wanted to be buried. The burials were inexpensive, they were cheap, they were perfunctory, family members were often not allowed to go to them. The thing that came to me when I saw this graveyard was that although there are mementos and shrines everywhere, it doesn't look like a graveyard. There aren't any memorial stones or actual graves that you can see. In fact, there's a cement floor. I wanted to create something that had a visual representation of that, but that also, in a way, respected the people that were buried here and acknowledged their lives and the history. There's a really large memory wall which symbolises a school blackboard because there were schools surrounding this site. There was a school on this site and there were lots of children buried here. I also decided that the crosses that are featured in the piece would look almost like bits of wood tacked together, like the coffins would have been in the ground. If you look on the floor, there are imprints, fake imprints, of plots and numbers on those plots. Because when people were buried here, they were buried in burial pits. There, there weren't noticeable plots. You, you wouldn't come here and, and stand above a grave plot and know that your loved one was buried there. Every, everybody was kind of packed in and the numbers represent the fact that there are possibly as many as 15,000 bodies here. I mean, the music aims to initially create a feel for what London may have sounded like in the 1700s and 1800s. So as you walk into the piece you hear sounds of children playing, you hear sounds of carriages going past and people talking. And there's an interesting contrast there as well with the sounds of this area now, which is a very noisy area, very bustling and busy, very similar to the way it would have been back then. You can hear the bells locally, and there's bells in the piece, and it provides, I suppose, an interesting contrast between the fact that London here is very, very noisy with contemporary sound, but back then this was a really busy, rowdy area. There were lots of lots of shops, it would have been bustling, I say shops, um, people selling street traders, it would have been bustling with people, bustling with noise, lots of children, there was a school over there, there were schools around here, and all the people buried here had lives and stories to tell, and most of them were forgotten. One of the movements in the piece is um, about a man lying on the grave of his deceased, and I, I think what I was trying to do here was to acknowledge the fact that that wouldn't have happened, there wouldn't have been a plot or a grave, there wouldn't have been somewhere you could go and sit and be with your loved one that you've lost. There's a children's song which is sung by children and it's almost like they're remembering a song that their mother may have sung to them. Singing about lying in bed, lying very still, which is really sad and in a lot of stories in literature from the 1700s, children are often described in lullabies as being asleep in their bed when they're buried and I, su I suppose it it was very common, child death was very common then, and it's incredibly sad that the literature is imbued with that, including the lullabies. In a lot of literature from the time, children's stories often use the bed and the grave interchangeably. So a lot of lullabies and nursery rhymes, they're really sad because you read them and you know they're about children dying, which was a very common thing. There was a cholera epidemic here in the last years of the site, which would, would probably explain why there's lots of children buried here as well. The way you interact with the piece is a really important part of it. There are sensors hidden in the crosses and you can walk up to one cross and the sound will fade up and you will hear one voice, one narrative. But if there are more people on the site, you will hear more of the piece. So it's almost like I've separated a choir into individual voices and the audience trigger those sounds. And the reason I've done that is because I think the act of standing and listening is almost like you're standing and paying respect to the dead.
Requiem for Crossbones is about remembrance. It's about remembering the people that are buried here, acknowledging that they do matter, that they are important, and bringing the histories of this site back to life. I think the thing that I like most about Emily's installation is the way that it's bringing this space to life. Um, for me, it's a place of quiet contemplation and I love seeing when I'm wardening at Crossbones, different people coming in and sitting here and enjoying it. But I feel that the audio is bringing a new dimension to that. And I think with the wooden crosses, it's really accentuating the fact that this is a space that people are buried in. And over the last couple of weeks, it's been really exciting for me to see people interacting with the installations. Um, because I think it's brought a really different dimension to how people are interacting with that space. And I think the work that Emily's done in terms of archival to look at songs that were sung in the area and uh, connecting with the school that would have actually been on the Crossbones graveyard is an amazing way of honouring uh, the space and also bringing to life its history, its social history. This is the first time that I've come to see and hear this piece and I uh, just found it really beautiful. Um, I've come here today with my two children who are under the age of 10 and I was really surprised because they didn't really know what to expect or what to experience today. I didn't tell them too much about it and they just come straight in and, and they went over and wrote on the blackboard what they're, what they're feeling um, without being told to do that and I just found that really moving. The music is just beautiful and it's just a really special place to be. I uh, have known this place for a long time, but I haven't been here in a number of years. It was, uh, Crossbones was quite broken down the last time. I myself do history and prostitution history, so I know the place. Um, I never imagined an installation like this. I think it's super gorgeous and moving. It brings it all home, the old things were in the past, um, where people didn't care about that sort of life. You know, they were just buried here, and, but not very well. You know, it's, uh, it's very sad what happened, but uh, it brings it all home.